The Silver Swans I don't think that I've ever been in love. She stopped for a minute and then she continued, How will I know? My name is Dr. Horatio Fundobi. But I am not the kind of doctor who sees sick people. I am called a doctor because I have spent many, many years studying. I studied history, and I now have an important job at the British Museum in London. Every Sunday afternoon I walk along a path in Chelsea, on the bank of the River Thames. A lot of painters live in Chelsea. People often think that I am a painter. I look like one and I dress like one. I have a white beard, I carry a black wooden stick, and I wear a large, bold hat. The hat is more than 40 years old, and I always wear it for my walks. I enjoy my walks very much. There is a lot to see and hear. Boats pass on the river. Birds cry noisily above it. Along this bank of the river there are some old houseboats. People buy these houseboats because they like living on the water. They enjoy watching the passing boats and listening to the sounds of a busy river. They paint the boats in bright colors. One Sunday afternoon I was standing by the houseboats, looking across the river. In the deepest water in the middle of the Thames, I could see a beautiful, white sailing ship. It was called the Poseidon. The back of the ship was a little unusual. I knew that the owner of the ship was Lord Struve. He was a great scientist who studied. Ocean Life Near the Poseidon were a large ship from South America and a dirty Spanish boat. Then I noticed one of the houseboats near the bank. It was called the Nairine. And it was very colorful. The boat was gray, but parts of it were painted in bright colors. The door was blue and the large wooden cover in the floor of the front deck was bright red. There were some steps going from the boat to the bank of the river. These were painted blue, like the door I saw a young girl trying to push back the cover. She wanted to get out, and she was halfway out of the hole, but she had a problem. She saw me. She didn't shout at me, but her mouth formed the words. I can't open it. I hurried towards the Nairine. It was sitting on the bottom of the river and I had to walk down the blue wooden steps, over the water of the Thames. I went carefully along the deck of the boat until I reached the girl. The new red paint has dried and I can't open the cover, she said. Wait a minute, I said. I used my stick to open it. A few minutes later the girl climbed out onto the deck. She was about twenty years old. She was wearing old, blue, paint-covered trousers and a gray shirt. I thought that she looked quite beautiful. She looked at me with big, green eyes. They were the loveliest part of her face. Thank you, she said. That's all right, I replied. I was glad to help. You're a dear man, she said. Do you know who you're like? You're like one of those older men who work in museums. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't very polite. She smiled gently. But I am an old man, I said. Please don't worry. In fact, I do work at the British Museum. I'm Dr. Horatio Fundobi. Oh, she said. The British Museum. She was silent for a second, and then she asked, Would you like to see my octopus? 
Yes, I would, I said, smiling. She took me down through the blue door into a green room. I could see a small bed, bookshelves, and paintings. Then I noticed two glass cases, one large and one small. In the small case were two fish and in the large one was the octopus. Isn't it beautiful, she said. Sometimes I sit and look at it for hours. Does it have a name? I asked. Oh, I just call it octopus, she replied. And you? What's your name? I asked. After a minute she said, my name's Thetis. Ah, uh. I said. That's the name of one of the water people in the Greek stories of long ago. Thetis was the daughter of Nereus and Doris. They lived at the bottom of the sea. She pulled her ear, thoughtfully. My real name's Alice, she said. I call myself Thetis because I'd like to live at the bottom of the ocean. When she said this, I could understand the reason for her green room. It was quite dark in the room. The only lights were the ones that lit the glass cases. The paintings on the wall were in blues and greens and showed fish and other underwater animals. I was sure that she was the painter. She was almost a water child herself, with her small nose, large eyes, and pretty, short, brown hair. Would you like me to sing for you? she asked. Oh, please do, I replied. My song's called The Silver Swans, she said. How shall I know my true love? When will my true heart speak to me? Oh, when the silver swans come sailing, then I will know my true love. Then I will be with my true love, forever with my true love. It was a beautiful song. But I felt that there was a sadness behind the words. The words were wise and understanding. But I knew that the young girl in front of me was never in love. That was lovely, I said. Thetis opened her eyes. Thank you, she said. Who wrote it? I asked. I did, she said. It's mine. Do you often write songs? I asked, surprised. Only when they come into my head, she replied. Suddenly she moved towards me. How will I know my true love, she asked, seriously. How will I know when I'm really in love? How old are you, Thetis? I asked. I'm twenty-one, she answered. Have you been in love? I said. No, she replied. I don't think that I've ever been in love. She stopped for a minute and then she continued, How will I know? Who will tell me when I am? You're so old and wise. Can't you help me? She looked pale and unhappy. I thought carefully before I answered her questions. At last I replied, when he's ill and ugly, and you can still love him. Then you can be sure. When he is ill and ugly. She said to herself, quietly. She sat there thinking. Then suddenly she remembered that I was there. Oh, I'm. Sorry, I'm being rude, she said. Would you like some tea, Dr. Fundoby? I'd love some. Thank you, I replied. She disappeared for two or three minutes. 
I looked round the room again. At last she returned, carrying the tea things. She poured out the tea. As she lifted her cup to her mouth, she said again, when he is ill and ugly. Oh, thank you. Dr. Fundobi. She smiled at me. We talked for about half an hour. She told me about her mother and father, they also lived in London. But she wanted to live alone on this houseboat. She loved it because it was on the water. She had an evening job. But she did not tell me what it was. Suddenly, I began to feel quite ill. I wasn't sure why. But before I could decide, Thetis asked, Would you like to go out on deck? There was not much room at the back of the boat, but it was enough for the two of us. Then I saw with surprise that there was water all round the boat now. Four dirty white swans went past us. Their feathers were dirty with oil from the river, and their eyes looked very unfriendly. Thetis looked at them. I said, smiling, perhaps they're the silver swans in your song. Perhaps you're going to meet your true love. She only said, these swans are a dirty gray silver. Then a small wooden boat came up to us. There was a tall, strong man in the boat, he looked about thirty-five years old. He was wearing a blue sailing shirt and dark blue trousers. He had black hair, a beard, and bright, blue eyes. Hello, he shouted, and his white teeth shone against his dark beard. Have you some cotton to mend my trousers? I caught them on a piece of wood. Yes, of course, Thetis called back. If you climb up here, I'll mend them for you. The sailor laughed. I'll do it. I can't tell you where they're caught, he said. Oh, I understand. Thetis said, smiling. Then she went to find the cotton. When she returned, she put it carefully in a piece of cloth. Then she threw the cloth into the boat. The sailor caught it. Clever child, he said. Thanks very much. I'll be quick. He moved the boat away and then tied it up next to another boat. We watched as he mended his trousers with his back towards us. While we stood there, a large boat went past. The Nairine started to go up and down in the water. I suddenly felt very sick. Thetis saw my face. Oh, you poor man, she cried. I forget that moving boats sometimes make people ill. Come with me, I've got a bottle of medicine. It will soon make you better. She helped me down into the green room and sat me in a chair. I was feeling very ill now. She went to a small cupboard and got a small brown bottle from it. She poured something from it into a spoon and gave it to me. They discovered this medicine during the Second World War, she said. Some of the sailors suffered badly in storms or when the sea was rough. You'll feel fine in a few minutes. Just sit there quietly, she went out on deck. I heard her shout to the man in the boat, hello again. What's your name? Hadley. Richard Hadley, he called back. What's yours? I've heard that name before, I thought. But I can't remember where. Thetis, she replied. There was silence for a minute, then he said, Oh, 
That's the name of the daughter of Nereus and Doris in the old Greek stories. They lived at the bottom of the sea. He was silent again. Then I heard him call, Where's your father? He isn't my father, Thetis said. He's an old man who's visiting me. He's feeling sick, so I've given him some medicine. I heard the laugh in the sailor's voice as he shouted, What? Sick. On that old houseboat? It's like dry land on there. Another boat passed and the Nairine suddenly moved up and down again. But the medicine was beginning to work. It isn't an old boat, Thetis said, seriously. It's my home. And it does move up and down a lot sometimes. You need a strong stomach. Oh yes, I'm sure that you do, he said. But I knew from his voice that he didn't really believe her. Really, it's true, she continued. Perhaps even you'll get sick one day. The sailor laughed loudly. Who, me? Listen, child. I've sailed every ocean and sea in the world, and in all sorts of weather, and I haven't been sick yet. I heard Thetis say, there's always a first time. Would you like to try? Tell me when it gets really rough, he said. I heard his boat touch against the Nairine, as he continued, you're not as young as I thought. I'm sorry that I called you a child. Perhaps I'll try your boat sometime. Well, thanks again for the cotton. At last I began to feel better. When I went up on deck, Thetis was looking out across the river. She was watching the sailor as he went out towards the lovely, white ship. Oh, she said. You're better. Yes, I said. Good, she said. That medicine always works. Then she added, he said some very unkind things, didn't he? I started to say, he. But wasn't he beautiful, she continued, dreamily. To be continued. If you enjoy our content, please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Your support means the world to us.